Paul, is it possible to beat the stock market? 1,000% it's possible to beat the stock market. The hardest part about beating the stock market is what, Seth? Can you possibly guess what it is? Because most people think it's the numbers, it's the analysis, it's all this. What is it, though? Mindset, discipline, patience. Yes, exactly. Guys, it is very, very difficult that when you see a stock go like this Mm -hmm. to buy it. Prime example, look at Alibaba right now. I am getting teased by my friends for Alibaba. I'm an absolute buyer of Alibaba. You have over a million. It has fallen a ton. And I have a million dollars invested in Alibaba. Does that mean I'm going to be right? No. But if I have 100 Alibaba opportunities, companies like Alibaba, it will do well over a long period of time. So, Paul, what have the long-term returns looked like? So, for long periods of time, the S&P, is, with dividends, has done about 9.9% a year. And this is over 100-plus years, okay? That's not something insane. Now, the interesting part is, when you go to a financial planner, you give them 10, 15,000 a year, you put it in their actively managed mutual funds, and all of a sudden you wake up with millions of dollars. You go, this is awesome. Well, guys, guess what? You can do that with getting 6 or 7% returns a year, and that's what happens. Because 82% of mutual funds do not beat the market every year. So over a 10-year period, it's really difficult. Guys, these are humans. These are professionals, and they can't beat the market. Why is that? Well, how can I expect, yeah, I was saying, how can I expect a normal viewer to be better than these professionals? Every great value investor. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Manish Pabrai, Seth Klarman, Howard Marks, all these Carl Icahn, these brilliant men, what do they always say? You got to zig when everyone's zagging. And it's very easy to say that, but it's hard to do what we said, which is when the stock is falling or out of favor to buy, to go against the market. That is the hard part. People look at investing and think, I want immediate gratification. Yes. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be okay looking wrong while you buy companies at cheaper prices and wait for the market to take over. That's a very tough thing to do. Guys, it was hard for me for a long time. And finally, one day I said, this ain't working the way I was doing it. There's got to be a better way. How were you doing it? Buying high-flying companies that were talked about in the news? Yeah, Yeah, I was buying high-flying companies like everybody else was talking about. I think a lot of the viewers do that as well. Of course. Back in 2000, my sister's boyfriend's father came to visit. He said to me, Paul, you like stocks? I said, sure do. He's like, I got a winner for you, Global Crossing. Uh Here I was, I was like, oh, I'm 19 years old. This guy knows better than me. He worked in that industry. I lost 100% of my money in that company. Now, I'm not blaming him. It's all on me. But at the end of the day, it was me not understanding business, not understanding investing. And there was many, many years before I started to understand that to go against the grain. If my sister's boyfriend's father, who has no business evaluating a company, is recommending a company to me, it is my job to say, I got to avoid that. And it's very difficult because we all, we, we succeeded as a society with herd mentality. We survived the caveman years with herd mentality. Let's all get together and fight off these big animals. Let's go get together and kill animals to get food. It was all about herd mentality. Mm-hmm. And that's going to hurt you in the world of investing. Investing is about the numbers. The numbers are the easy part. It's very easy. I'll show you a balance sheet, profit. I'll teach you all that. So you're blue in the face, you'll be an expert. It's hard, even during bad times, as a value investor to say, am I just wrong here? In the Education of a Value Investor by Guy Spear, he talks about how in 08, he was seeing all his value investing friends giving up very quickly, like I'm out. He's like, wait a second, isn't this what we preached? Mm-hmm. That's what we want to do. He's got a good friend, Monish Pabrai. Monish Pabrai from 1999 to 2018, returned 15.5% to his investors per year. That's incredible. Warren Buffett, the best of all time, arguably the best of all time, over a 60-year career, has returned 20.6% per year to his investors. 20.6% per year. I'm going to show you three different level returns. The level returns with a money manager after you've been charged fee after fee and they don't beat the market. If you just bought a low-cost ETF that matches the market and if you invested in Buffett. So this is our... Retirement calculator on our software. Let's say you're age 30. You're going to retire at 65. You currently have 100,000 in savings and you you save $12,000 a year and you increase that savings amount by 3.5% a year. 12 doesn't sound crazy, you know? No, it doesn't. Now, let's say you, after all your fees and everything and missing the market, you get about 7.5% return with a money manager. And let's say during retirement, you make 5% per year. So this is if I hand my money to a financial planner and they put it in a mutual fund. Correct. Now, let's say we make all these assumptions, generate. 
At the age of 65 at retirement, with a financial planner, I'll have $4.3 million. $4.3 million. Sounds awesome, right? That's a lot of money. I gave this person $12,000 a year, increased it a little bit every year. They gave me $4.4 million. Incredible. It's a win. Great it's job. a win. They're going to brag to you. They're going to sit there. and They're going to be on the golf course going, look at how amazing I am. They cost you millions of dollars. Let me show you. Let's change this to 9.9%. The return you'd get if you bought a low-cost ETF and you just matched the market. Instead of $4.3 million, $8 million, folks, $8 million. Your genius financial planner costs you $3.7 million. It can't be possible. It is possible. Now, here's how amazing everything is. Let's assume Monish's returns of 15.5%. Well, that's just absurd, isn't it? Instead of $8 million, you'd have $36 million. But he's the, one of the best in the world, Paul. Well, not the best. Let's show you Warren Buffett's 20.6% return. Come on. Instead of $144 million versus your financial planner at 4.3. <laughs> it's absolutely unbelievable how much these returns are. Guys, 1%, 2% a year is a huge difference over 30 or 40 years. A huge difference. So I'm not Warren Buffett. What, what can a normal person watching do? So what do we have here? We have this community. We have a process. Now, my goal for myself is to beat the market by two or three percentage points a year. Even if I match the market, I feel good because I've bought less risky and less volatile stocks because I'm paying less for cash flow. Now, this might sound confusing and too easy, and it's not easy, but the hard part is the emotion. That's why we have this community. This community is there to help you when times are tough. Why is this investment falling? Get the ideas from me. There's over 6,000 people in this community talking every single day. What are they talking about? They're talking about their investment ideas. They're helping each other. Guys, stay with this. This is what we believe. Don't bail on this. This is what you need because when you're out there having these ideas and you have nobody around you, it's hard, right, Seth? Yeah. I was like that. I was like, wait a second. Oh, I was completely alone. Anyone who would give me any advice, I took. Oh, look at that. I just got a new chat message. Somebody tagged me. I have eight messages to check out here. I just go, not now. But anyhow, Whatever, that's how active any, the community is. Anyone who would give me advice, I took it, Paul. I mean, so that's how I got people. Why? Because they're older. They're wiser. They're smarter than me. Of Guys, course. they're more. I've met multi, multi, multi pe people worth heck, um, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I go, oh my God, you're terrible at investing. And it's very common because most people are good at business or good at investing. Or neither, right? Okay. The best investors are the ones who are good at business. Yeah, you treat this almost one in the same business and investing. Because that's what it is. When you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. Becoming a co-owner. I you're love becoming this. Becoming a co-owner. So what about a return a normal person could expect? So if you're able to do, if you're able to go in and keep your discipline and keep your personal, that's the hard part is the emotion out of it. And you're able to get the 12 or 13% return. Let's go to 12 and a half. Now remember, with a financial planner, you had 4.4 million. If you matched the market, you had almost 8 million. At 12.5% return, are you able to get that? This is my goal right here, Paul. $16 million. Come on. Double by having 3% more per year. Not even 3%. And it's so, it's simple but not easy. The hard part, it's just like marriage. Marriage is simple. You get together, you live together, you make love every so often, you have kids, and guess what? Then this crap happens. It's not easy. You still have to manage each other's egos every day and who wants what and who this fight over this and that the other. That's the way investing is. It's simple but not easy. It has been proven time and time again by many, many great investors like Joel Greenblatt. The simpler the metrics, the better. But you have to be blind to everything. You have to sit there and shut it all off. Seth has a family member who did the little book that beats the market. After two months, they're like, I'm out. It's not being the market. Yes. Two months? Yeah, so you might have this mindset at home that we're not just going to buy a stock today and it instantly starts going up tomorrow. So when it starts going down, you I always be assume every stock in. I buy is going to fall in half. Oh, yeah? Before it goes up. Yeah. So they're saying, because I don't ever start my full position. I say, okay, I'm starting here. As it goes down, I'm going to buy more. But the only reason you're buying is because you know you're making a great decision at the time. Yes, because I'm buying, it's as if the business was a privately held business, would I buy more shares if somebody came to me and said, hey, I'll sell you my 5%. I know you paid a million dollars for this 5%. I'll sell you my 5% for 750. I'd be like, yeah, I'll take it. I wouldn't even think about it. Think about your house. Your house, whatever you paid for your house. If the house next door to you is the exact same copy, was all of a sudden suddenly 30% less because somebody needed to sell fast. Would you go, no, 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 oh my God, I'm screwed. You'd be like, yeah, I'll take the house. Give it to me. Of course you would. You flip it in two seconds. 
Now, granted, with stocks, it takes a little bit longer, but it's about a process, and that's what we teach on this channel. Paul, unfortunately, there's other channels that are teaching something a little different. Well, there's a moron out there, Jeremy from Financial Education, who Seth once had a call with their main person. They said Jeremy expects 40% returns per year. What he didn't tell Seth was they actually meant 40% declines per year because his biggest investments have declined 50, 60, 70%. He is stupid. Now, I don't blame you for listening to him. He's on YouTube. He did a couple of things. I don't blame. I used to do the same way. I used to sit there and look at these people saying, look, my, fr- my sister's boyfriend's dad, this person's smarter than me. Yes. They're a business person. They get it. They didn't get it. It's about process. He will not make 40% per year. The best investor ever did 20.6% over 60 years. I 100% billion percent guarantee he will not come close to 40% a year. In fact, I would say he's not even going to meet the market. It is abs- He has no process. It is stupid. It is asinine. It is a waste of time. The best value investors will tell you that it's hardest during bull markets to make a lot of money when you're a value investor. But when the headwinds are strong, that's when we do best. Anybody can make money in a bull market. Everyone feels like a genius. The Kelf caddy at Firestone Country Club was telling me how wrong I was about Palantir, Tesla, and Bitcoin. Sounds good. Why is the 18-year-old gaff golf caddy telling me about investing? He has no idea what he's talking about. So what is the process of looking at a stock? The process of looking at a stock is what we've created is the eight-pillar portf- eight, eight pillar stock analysis. What it does, it looks at a stock. Let's pull up a stock as an example. Here's our software. Let's pick up stock everybody knows, Apple. I what literally this- own 17 Apple devices. <laughs> Correct. We all have Apple. Mm-hmm. So this whole entire process is looking at, first, the five-year PE of the company. We want another 22.5, so that's an X. The next thing we look at is the five-year return on invested capital being greater than 9%. 31.7, absolute check mark. Third pillar, we want revenue growth. So we go to the income statement. We look at five-year revenue growth, 229 to 365. Check mark there. They have five-year revenue growth. Pillar number four, we want net income growth. Five years ago, 48.3, now 95. Check mark there. Pillar number five, we want shares declining. Are they buying back shares, rewarding me as an investor and giving me a bigger piece of the company? Because if they're issuing shares, they're hurting me as an investor. They're diluting me as an owner and giving me less and less of the company as time goes on. In this case, Apple went from 21.8 to 16.7 billion shares. They are buying back shares. Massive check mark. Amazing. I'm, I'm becoming a bigger, sh- a bigger part of the company. Just by doing nothing but sitting there and waiting. Mm. Pillar number six, we want to look at their long-term liabilities. We go back to our main page and we take their five-year average free cash flow. We multiply it by five and that gets us $360 billion. So 72 times five is 360. We want their long-term liabilities under 360 billion. We go to the balance sheet. We scroll all the way to the bottom. It's only 160 billion. They can easily afford their current long-term liabilities. That is incredible. Not having a lot of debt can help them through bad times. Correct. Because when bad times occur, and they will occur, revenue falls, profit falls, you still need to be able, the less debt you have, the easier to disadvantage them. Because if you have, can't pay that debt, they will call you on it. The banks will call you on it. They absolutely will. Pillar seven and eight have to do with free cash flow. We go to the free cat, we go to the cash flow statement. And guys, free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. We add this line to make the math really easy for you. Five years ago, $52 billion. Last year, $93 billion. Check mark there. Jeez. And our final metric is we take the five-year average free cash flow, we multiply it by 20, kind of like a metric for PE, to get a market cap to start at. $1.36 trillion. My Apple's actually at $2.7 trillion. Mm-hmm. So it's overpriced right now based on this. And guess what, guys? That seemed like a lot of math. Good news. Made it easy for you. The eight pillars tab right here gives you all the math. Yeah, I don't want to do any of that math at all. I don't want to do it either. That's why I created this. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> That's it, Paul. <laughs> like people think like I like doing the math. No, I want to save myself time. I want to look at hundred companies. I don't want to go, hey, look at my calculation here. I mean, it was stupid. Yes. Why waste my time doing all that work when I can do it here? One click. One click. Boom. It just says it's overpriced. But guess what? We don't know if it's overpriced because guess what, guys? If Apple were going to grow hundred percent a year for the next five years, I absolutely would buy it all day today. So what we then created was a stock analyzer tool. What this does is it tells us what com- price we should pay for the company today based on our assumptions, because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Yeah, this translates all the financials into what should I be paying for this? Correct. 
So you can do one to 20 year analysis. I always pick 10 and low, middle and high assumptions. And guys, the very first thing is revenue growth. So I'm going to put my assumptions in here for Apple. I'm going to be conservative guys because my goal as a value investor is to be conservative and still buy when the price is good. I'm going to do four, six and 8% revenue growth. Profit margin, I'm going to do 21, 22, and 23. Free cash flow margin, 24, 25, 26. PE. And this is where people are going to get mad at me. Paul, 13, 15, 17, that's too low. Guys, the larger the company, the harder it is to grow. And you give a higher PE for higher growth potential. And you want a good deal. And I want a good deal. Finally, my desired annual return, I always do 12.5%. Because that's what return I want to make. And that gives me an ample margin of safety. If I buy enough companies that that'll do well, hit the analyze button. And it just tells me right now, Apple's probably overpriced for me. 60 to 70 is the low range. 100 to 120 is the high range. But here's the good news, guys. See these check marks here? I can just literally click add to my watch list. And when Apple hits 115 and goes below it, it'll notify me. We're buying. Oop. Done. And it'll tell you, tell me on my phone and everywhere because this, all the software you saw here is all available on your phone as well. It's all available right here. But the biggest thing, guys, you saw that chat pop up is this community. Guys, it's hard to research. We have over 6,000 people in this community all talk about the same ideas. Just like the software does the math for you, the community, you guys can all group research together. Hey, I'm looking at Apple. What are you seeing out there? Well, I didn't like this about it. Oh, I like this about it. I don't like this. I like this. And all do your ideas together. And don't think that everybody there is a soldier. There's a crypto chat in there. There's Tesla people in there. I don't agree with them, but they're still in there talking about these ideas. There's day trading chats in there. You want to join the day trading community, you can do that. All of this, guys, everything you saw here, everything on the main page, and everything that's going to come, real estate calculator, momentum trading, 30 years of financial data. You get access to Seth Moe and I. You saw the message pop up. Somebody tagged me in a message, and I will probably respond to it. The stock analyzer tool, the eight pillar analysis, all of these things, the retirement calculator, big, also big thing, exclusive daily content, guys. Seth that's Moe right. and I. We do videos every day. We record videos every single day and post them only for the community, in the community, and on the phone. All of this for less than a cup of coffee per day. And you saw that if your returns can hit those 2 or 3% more, it's worth millions of dollars to you. This is a no-brainer, less than a cup of coffee every single day. Yeah, Paul, you get access to guys who manage over $100 million in assets. You can tag Paul right now. We look forward to speaking to you in our chat.